How we doing everybody? It's Alex from Tiger Skull RPG here back again and today I wanted to show you how I pose a character. Really any character. We're gonna do um, this skeleton archer today and stick around until the end of the video and I'll show you my secret juice uh, technique that I put on just about every character that I pose and um, I think it'll really add some life to the poses you do as well. Um, so let's get into it, shall we? We're going to learn um, the transpose master, and it's going to kind of assume that your your scene is built into several subtools here, which can be annoying to work with when you're posing. So um, highly recommend using the transpose master if we're going to do some posing on a character that has several layers like this. Your characters might have even a lot more. I mean, I've got just a simple skeleton here. <clears throat> okay, and that shouldn't take too long. And it's done, and you can see my model. Here it is. Again, looks a little different. Um, but what this tool does is it kind of just takes your model and makes it reduces everything to the lowest subdivision level and um, and that way when you're posing like this it's very light to then get in here and uh, what am I doing? I'm trying to isolate the arm it's, in very, it's very light to get in here and manipulate all of these uh, you know sculpts at one time and what I'm doing now is trying to just isolate the arm with masking. You're going to do a lot of masking. Actually, I don't really even recommend using the default pen. You'll probably want to switch to this mask lasso, which is a little bit... This gives you a little bit more freedom uh, because you can lasso around tricky objects. So, um, you know, with regards to where to start a pose, it's kind of hard to say. Um, you know, I usually just kind of start with something like that I know is as, an, as a shape or a gesture or a position that I know I'll need. And because I'm doing a uh, kind of a drawn bow pose, I definitely want to straighten out this left arm here that will be holding the bow. And you can see I'm getting very finicky here with the, my mask. I want this elbow to be selected as well. So <clears throat> generally with everything, I would start with your knowns, you know, whether you're sculpting or posing or whatever. It's like if you know you need something, uh, just start there, you know. And then just keep doing the things you know you need until there's nothing left that you think you need to do or to detail or that would make it look a little bit better. And then before you know it, you've come a long way. And, uh, you know, be honest with yourself. Even if you've done some work and it doesn't look super great, uh, don't be afraid to erase that work, you know, just because you taken one stab at it and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you should check it off as being done just yet. Sometimes you got to do something three or four times. So just like I'm kind of doing here, you know, that first rotation of the arm uh, really was just like close, but you got to kind of refine it once you get everything into place. So now I'm going to take this bow I mean, for sure I want it in the hand, right? So let's go ahead and do that. And, you know, really there's nothing fancy happening here. We're just moving things right now. We're just masking and moving. And, um, you know, it's nice if you have really nice poly groups um, to, your mop, to your sculpt. So something like this. I just want it to be, I want it to look good in the hand because what I'm going to do is rotate the hand and the bow together. Now, I might even group these together so that, so if I click, control shift, click this, control shift, click 
the hand and this bowstring. Let's uh, well, let's invert our selection and let's hide this hand. And I'm gonna I have a hotkey, Control Shift V, and this will group visible. Um, make hotkeys on a lot of these um, different grouping buttons. But here's group visible and then this. So now every time we want to use the hand and bow, they're always going to be together. And the fingers are, you know, not wrapping around the bow. But uh, let's not worry about that yet. Let's not get caught up in those kind of details just yet because that's the sort of thing uh, that I'd like to do at the end after we're done with kind of the, the big shapes here. So this bow should be pretty parallel to the arm. I think something like that. The looks like his arm is kind of bending down a little bit. Let's see. Is this bone? Bone looks okay. Let's grab this and let's grab his little wrist guard here and let's rotate all of these and just kind of straighten out his arm a little bit. And this is what I'm talking about is just looking for little things that just kind of look wrong and could look better. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, Maybe I will, maybe I'll move this into place and add this to our group too. Let's see, do I want to do that yet? You know, you could even just ignore this arrow and do this at the end. That might be the way to go. I think I might do that. I think I might just move this out of the way. You know, an arrow is really easy to move around. So I'm just going to put this over here. Um, okay, so I feel like I've got this all sorted out, and let's talk a little bit more about the pose. I think I want the pose, I don't, I've got a, you know, I've done some skeletons in the past, and I've done one that kind of has the bow tip, and, uh, you know, right out to the side, and, um, I've done another one where the bow was kind of drawn, but not aimed kind of in a relaxed pose so kind of in like a ready stance so I don't really want to do that actually mm, so I think I want to do I think I want the skeleton to be aiming but um, not kind of doing maybe like a lazy draw you know like he's um, you know kind of like that gang style, you know, shooting sideways sort of idea. Like, I don't see these skeletons as having a perfect technique with these, with this bow, you know? Yeah, kind of like a side shot, kind of like, uh, yeah. Maybe we'll turn on perspective and just get a better look. And you don't always have to mask things to move them around. Like, I like the, whoa. What's this, the clay tool? Let's not use that. Let's use the move tool. Let's just isolate this arm. I don't, I'm going to kind of just remove a little bit of that, whatever, this bend. You know, sometimes you model something in T-pose, there's little bends here and there because, you know, that just looks right, and then you get into a different pose. And you just need to do a subtle little bend to kind of get it feeling right again. So a lot of subtlety here. So he's looking off to the side, and I think that's what I want. Let's update his uh, cowl now to also kind of be looking to the side. You, I could have, you know, rotated this with the head, as you see there. That kind of works. Oops, let's mask all of this. But you know what? I think when you have a hood on and you turn your head, you do kind of turn the hood with you, but you also... You know, you're kind of not uh, fully in control of that hood, you know, right? It kind of um, gets in your way just a little bit, so... Yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to bend this other arm, I think, and get this into position, like kind of like the arrows, you know, cocked. I think that's a good next step. So basically you just isolate with the mask what you want using this mask lasso. Um, having to be really precise here, you know, I 
you can see these bones are like pretty detailed. Yes, the sculpt is rough a little bit. Um, this was <clears throat> kind of a gestural sculpt actually on these skeletons. It's not super like, you know, refined like say a, uh, you know, one of those skeletons you'd see in science class or something. Um, there's a, still a lot of, I guess, digital tool marks on the sculpt, but at miniature scale it looks pretty good, so um, I actually kind of like all the little details uh, at that scale, so. And, um, you know, but the thing is working in that way in, three, in 3D, I guess, in ZBrush, using uh, like a DynaMesh kind of clay technique is that um, you kind of got to work at a very high resolution, so you'll notice the bones are very high resolution compared to say the cowl here, which is modeled in kind of a, I mean, in almost a traditional modeling manner using uh, Z uh, remesher. So let's lift this arm up too. But honestly, it's a little bit, if you're model, I would, I always, uh, well, not always, I, obviously, but typically, I would try to model as much as I can uh, using these subdivisions so that you do have a nice low poly model to work with here. <clears throat> well, that's kind of cool. kind of looks like he just fired a shot. But, yeah, that's not really the pose that I really want, although it is kind of working for that feel like he just released the arrow. Um, but yeah, like I said, let's let's not. We've got to get this arrow in the shot. So, we've got to get that arrow attached. Uh, looks like the cowl needs to just come up a little bit in the shoulder. I don't. I think that shoulder is in a good spot. So let's instead of let's try and uh, oh, and this on this side too. It could come up a little bit. Probably the whole cowl will be lifted just slightly. There you go. Um, maybe not too round over here. Okay. Okie dokie. And then, yeah, okay. We're getting there. So one technique that's very valuable that I'll go over is you can select your mask, you know, and then control click to soften it. And it'll give you a bit of a gradient. Again, this works better when you have a low poly model. Uh, the higher poly it is uh, in terms of detail, then the less dramatic effect you're gonna see as you do this, but um, it's, still, it's still working for us nonetheless. And I just want a little bit of curvature here. Like the bones, you know, your bones kind of bend a little. And I'm going to exaggerate that for this uh, sculpt. And yeah, it's getting kind of gnarly here. What I might do is uh, just re-sculpt that area a little bit at the end. I think... Um, I think I need to get even closer to the face with this arm. So let's mask this. A lot of this masking has to do with your camera angle. Uh, you gotta pick the right angle so that, and I don't mean a right angle like a geometry thing. I mean like the correct angle that kind of gives you a nice clean mask, you know? Uh, Cause if I came down, you know, Obviously, there's all you don't want to actually select some of the body or something somewhere way else in the model. Uh, that's really annoying. It does happen sometimes, and then you got to kind of fix it uh, later on because this this is a very linear uh, method uh, of working uh, working with the transpose master. You know if you. If you make a, you can you undo and stuff, obviously, but let's say you, um, 
deformed a finger and didn't notice it and it was 50 undoes ago you might have to undo so far back that you are you know undoing some really nice work that you want to keep in order to fix that little issue so and I've done that many times um, you know, posing figures like this and the best thing to do is really just to uh, accept that little flaw for now and then fix it on your main uh, sub tool later on because this is just a copy right this, you know what it does I didn't really show you but you know we still have our main file and um, then we have this transposed uh, you know merged copy and you know which is worth uh, saying if you haven't worked with transpose master before is um, there's these two files are linked together right now and so for example if I if you come in here and change start changing this sculpt um, you're at risk of breaking the link between these two characters so um, definitely don't you know go through the process if there's something wrong you know either like if you hit transpose master and you notice a problem in your sculpt that you didn't notice before you started um, you know if it's you know if you're just getting started maybe you want to take a minute to correct that and then restart the transpose master do it again but usually um, I find it's better to just stick here finish your sculpt or sorry finish your pose and then start doing those kind of corrections later on because yeah it's you know you kind of uh, kind of get tunnel vision in this tool and do a lot of work in a condensed amount of time and it sucks to lose that work and definitely I mean there's some things you can do if that happens um, sometimes like for example if you get a crash or something uh, yeah, I've definitely had situations where I've had to dig myself out of a hole with this to this workflow because it is so linear um, so if, if you if you run into something like that maybe drop me a message in the comments because uh, there's some techniques to recover these files for one thing you can like you can always always just hit quick save right now and this will save your project as it is uh, with these two files intact and and your link should still be preserved between these two um, so just you know quick save is usually your friend it's you know it's one of the lesser buggy things here in ZBrush although it's not completely bug free <clears throat> but uh, definitely do that this um, file I'm working on right now is you know it's its own model and you could even export it as an OBJ right now do some tweaking on it in a different software package like Blender or Maya or something and then you could just uh, re-import over top of this model and those changes will get reflected um, and you'll be able to actually you know reproject all that whatever change you made and it'll go back to your big super high res high poly sculpt so yeah I don't know it's not something you should probably do but sometimes it's you know ZBrush is funny and you may get a crash that saves just this file and not the uh, and not the other um, the big sub tool and then you'll have to make the link again but if you can export that OBJ then you can kind of preserve your work um, and you might be able to save some work should that happen at the worst time you know I mean, I mean, I don't mean to make this tool out to be as, you know, buggy or anything, but just to be aware of what's really happening uh, with these two files. 
Um, this is, you know, this is a throwaway file. Once I'm done posing, I don't try to like keep the, um, you know, like a version of the transpose file and come back to it later and, you know, tweak it. Like it's not really, I'm not really wor worried about um, saving, you know, redundancy in that way, you know, an iteration. Just kind of do your transposing, you know, and then uh, move on, you know. Okay, let's see here. So we've kind of got a pose going. What you can do is turn on the floor and, oh, our character is, of course, not on the floor. Ah, anyway, that's, yeah, well, yeah, I've already got him oriented for 3D printing, so uh, Y is no longer up. But that's not a problem. I think what I might do is... Um, hmm. I think I need to correct his neck here. It looks like he's kind of... I think he would be looking a little bit more over his shoulder. And I feel like his neck it's got a little bend to it that I'm not sure is helping us. So let's try let's try another rotate here. Let's get them looking more down the line of the site so that it look like this. It does, yeah, there it looks kind of look looks like he's actually uh, you know staring down the sight of this bow. And I'm gonna angle his head forward a little bit. You know, I think you, when you're focused on something, you kind of lean forward, you kind of lead into it. So let's try and uh, capture that. And then, of course, we got to do this again. And see, this is what I'm telling you about blurring on this low poly mesh. Look how much broader this gradient is, and it's you know much nicer to work with. Let's just reset our orientation. And oh, whoops! So we got a mask just the portion we want here. Let's do this again. Oh, let's invert our selection by clicking out here. And, okay, now we should have just the hood. Okay, great. Uh, okay, let's rotate this. How's that looking now? Cool, okay, I think, yeah, I think that's, that's working. I feel like Hmm. The bow. I guess the bowstring needs to be parallel with this, or I should say, needs to be perpendicular with this arm. I may lengthen this arrow now that I see this pose too. Hmm. This elbow, I think, should come up a little bit. Let's. Oh, come on. Okay. Oh, that mask on his head was messing us up. I think a lot of inverting, invert selection to isolate something. You can also, uh, you know, if it kind of is, if you get annoyed by, you know, control clicking, you know, something, and then uh, inverting to get to isolate whatever you're after. You can also hit the, uh, you know, get your widget up here and just control shift click on a part, and it'll completely mask that part for you which is kind of a quicker way to do it probably, but uh, I find a lot of times I'm just in a move tool and I, I'm pretty quick about, well, what did I do? Pretty quick about just like masking and uh, I don't, you know, I don't have to change tools to do it. So to, to each their own, however, you, however you'd like to, to approach that. It's kind of nice that there's more than one way to do it. Uh, okay, so we've kind of, what else do I want to do? I think this is his arm looking kind of low. I, I think I want to bring this arm up now, now that I see it again, going all the way back to the first thing we've done. Yeah, I think that I want, like, we are, you can see we're faking his anatomy here because his ball joint is not even anywhere near where it should be. So let's go ahead and put that back in there. And. There we go. That's feeling a bit better. Okay. 
I'm just going to fix this little cowl and then we'll move on to, I think, some finishing touches with this guy. Let's just bring this up here. And I'm going to blur a little bit so that I can reach a little bit deeper into this shoulder piece because I'm kind of not, this is one part I'm not grabbing right now. How's this? It's, I think that'll do. You don't have to completely fix the problem. Um, you know, we can do a lot of that in the final pose. Hmm. Okay. I think let's let's have a look at the process of you know finishing off a transposed master and let's get it back onto the mesh. So we just hit T pose to sub T when we're done. Uh, this will take a second or two because it's going to go through our subtool list and um, basically apply every change we just did to our uh, sculpt um, at the lowest subdivision level. And then it'll subdivide back up and there you have it. Our sculpt will be where it's at. One thing I wish I would have done just now is uh, clicked quick save before doing this. That would have been a very smart thing to do. <laughs> Sometimes with ZBrush, if you're hit a, if you're going to hit a button that you don't hit, you know, a hundred times a day, um, and uh, you're not quite sure if it's going to be a button that's very intense on the computer or not, it's a good idea to just hit quick save first. Um, it's kind of, you know, they do silly things in the software, like putting, uh, you know, sometimes there's just a button that will, like, you know, remesh your whole mesh or something next to, like, another uh, button that's just a lightning fast operation, and if you misclick, uh, you could just send your computer into this crash, uh, this, like, death state. Um, anyway, uh, so th there you go. It looks like it worked. Yeah, that looks like it worked. We've got our high-res skeleton here now. What I wanted to do, when, what I usually do in the beginning is um, give ourselves a little floor, you know, because you saw, remember, I had um, selected the, f the floor button, but because we're oriented for uh, 3D printing here, yeah, it's not really helping us at all. So this will help us sit our character down on something. Yeah, is this enough space for us? Let's move it a little bit. Um, anything else we want to do? I think that's good for now. Let's uh, let's um, make enough. Let's go ahead and uh, make a new uh, transpose master and do some final touches on this pose. I'm going to hit this little R here, not this one, but the one down here. And this is going to just hide our previous transpose master um, because we've added a, a new block now. So that previous transpose master doesn't really apply to this um, subtool stack anymore. So let's come in here and we'll do it all over again. And again, you know, setting this up is uh, a lot quicker than applying your edits at the end. So I'm going to quick save anyway. I kind of wish I would have done that earlier. All's well that ends well, though. Um, okay, so what I can see is that I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit off here. Um, I don't think I want any of the heels up you know, on the ball of his toe while he's... I mean, it kind of works. I thought he would be planted. Usually what I do, actually, is plant the characters on their feet. Um, and to do that, you really want to use the heels as your guide. So you'll just rotate every everything down until the heels are kind of touching the ground. And then update the feet accordingly. Let's go ahead and do that. 
let's just isolate the foot here. And there's a lot of junk, you know, these foot metacarpals or whatever these are. But uh, and I don't want the I don't really want to affect the heel or this bone. This is going to be connected to the leg. We'll just do the best we can selecting all this stuff. If it's not perfect, that's okay. I mean, this is going to be like you know this foot is only a couple millimeters across. So um, you know, don't be afraid to just kind of do a little dirty. And we can always clean it up later too, unless you really break it. And even this foot, I'm going to do, oops, let's hide, let's hide this while we do our mask. We don't want to mess up our nice uh, even floor there. That's our guide. I just want to make sure that the feet are planted, you know. Oh, let's hot. We gotta remember to mask this off. We don't want to again ruin our floor. And we'll just alt click to get yourself the rotation. You know, that's I'm not sure if I explained what I'm doing, but I, you know, you're kind of drawing the joint position as you go here. So yeah, maybe you could make an argument that you would rotate from here. But it's whatever. You can always move it and, and whatever. It's more about speed and ease of use than say um, you know try agonizing over the proper bone position all the time okay I think I want what do I want to do I feel like the legs are actually pretty good but uh, I just want to do some Let's mask this leg. I don't want to touch it. I like that one. I think this one should come in a little bit though. And you can, I was, it's kind of a rotation I'm after, but um, sometimes you can get away with just using the move tool to do what you want to do. Okay, I just wanted to bring that in a little bit. And, you know, since we angled him down, I like that motion. And I think I'm going to really lean into it with this cloth he has at his waist. The cloth, uh, yeah, I wasn't quite sure where, you know, cloth and hair are usually the kind of thing that do at the very end after you have the, uh, you know, the bulk of your pose set up because they should really kind of like complement whatever your pose is, is doing, you know, use them to kind of use your dynamic elements like if you have like I said, cloth, hair, maybe fire, like a torch or something like that. Um, use that kind of stuff to communicate motion or react to motion, you know? Like in, in this case, uh, he, he's, he's actually pretty stationary, but you know, maybe there's a wind, you know, maybe there's a wind blowing out, you know, even if you are stationary, then you, you always want to kind of move the cloth around because it's just like boring, uh, you know, just hanging their cloth is usually um, yeah, just that, boring. You know, there's situations where you do want to have cloth just hanging, I think. Uh, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's some really cool armor and you want... You want the cloth to drape over it in a kind of artsy way. I could see that being a situation where you don't want the cloth to be so dynamic. But um, in this case, I think it's only going to add to this. This is a little bit of an action pose, so let's let's add some action even into uh, the cloth here. And maybe I'll rotate it even more. Yeah, I think I will. So we'll take it back this way, and just a little more twist. Yeah, a little more twist. Yeah, okay. I think that's good. I think that should be good. And just to echo what I'm doing here, let's, let's do a little bit of what we're... I feel like this is stiffer cloth uh, or leather up here. But I'm, I'm still gonna try and 
represent what I'm doing there anyway. And the tip, tips are tough, man. Like they never really want to rotate nice like a, you know, you kind of always got to micromanage the very end, like the sharp ends of things if you, when you're ro twisting them and moving them around so, so they stay kind of, you know, they have this nice sharp point at the end. Um, I'm going to leave the front as it is. I'm going to add some buttons or maybe some something to the front. I'm going to add some clasps or something. Uh, so I do want this to feel a little bit heavier. Um, let's go ahead and let's, I think it's okay to, we can line this arrow up now into place and see. This is really going to tell us whether our pose is making sense or not, is this arrow here. Put this right in the middle of his two fingers, and then let's aim it, oops, it's not a rotation, let's aim it on his bow. Um, okay, so we do need a little bit more length, I think. That's fine, I kind of felt like this arrow was a little bit Hmm. Yeah, this seems, I think, I feel like the arrow should be more in line with his arm. But I, I like where the arrow is sitting, so I don't really want to move the arrow anymore, aside from uh, just lengthening it a little bit. Okay, let's move this, I think. Yeah, okay. I think I like that. I just feel like I need to, now that I see this, maybe I don't want that arm pulled back quite so much. And maybe it's easier if I rotate from the hand, you know, to get this angle straight. No. I think that's feeling better. Cool. Okay. All right, I think the rest of this I can do in the base tool, in the base sub tool. Um, okay, you know what that means? It's secret sauce time, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you a trick I use on pretty much every character. Um, let me straighten out this bow a little bit first. Uh, hold on. Let me select this thing. I feel like this bow is just going to bother me down here. Yeah, this needs to be a little more in line with this arrow. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use this outer rim. You know, this is just camera based rotation. And my floor is coming with me. And here we go. Okay. Yeah, this should be pretty much perpendicular. There we go, that's, is that better? I think that's better. Let's look at it as a miniature. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. Secret sauce time, got a thousand brushes in here. There is a brush called the spiral brush, okay? Now, because every motion is kind of a twist, um, I like to use this spiral brush and just add a little bit of twist myself with a little bit of spiral. Yep, that's probably the direction I want to go. And use a really big brush. And that just gives it a little bit of life, you know. Let's just undo. See, kind of stiff. And then we do it again. And then you don't, once you see it, uh, you know, back and forth like that, you can definitely see the, the kind of the power coming out of out of him, but um, you know if you don't do that, it, uh, it's not something you notice, right? You wouldn't notice if you didn't see it. But it's, I feel like it's uh, it's felt um, in the pose. This arrow kind of got bent, but um, you know you can fix that. Sometimes it's kind of nice to just go with it. 
But I think the tip could just use a little bit of correction. I think I don't. I do want. Yeah, I think I'll keep some of this bend. But um, it might have been just a little bit too much at the tip. And again, this part, these parts are kind of, these are kind of finicky. Like I said, it's often better to just rotate what you need classically with this. Rotating. Okay. Boom. Okay, I think that's it. Let's uh, let's go ahead and commit this sub this uh, sub tool T pose to sub tool. And again, forgot to hit quick save, but feeling confident that this will just work anyways. You know, this skeleton is, uh, well, what is it? It's 25 sub-tools, so there's quite a few layers, but at the same time, uh, I've definitely worked on much denser characters than this, you know, that get up to like 50 million points, and so mm, not too worried about it. Um, yeah, I haven't really seen an upper limit in terms of this tool not working. Again, it's really, the more of your layers that have low poly subdivisions, uh, the better. The better this will perform and the easier your life will be. And I really recommend sculpting uh, in such a way that you have a, a low subdivision. And, and the way you can tell if it's low enough, um, you know, is if you go down to your lowest level and draw, just draw a mask and use that control click and just see, you know, how much blurring you get. If you're if you're clicking and clicking and clicking, and your mask is not blurring, then that's probably too high for uh, your lowest subdivision level. And I would try and, uh, you know, Z remesh or do some projecting and do whatever you can to. Uh, oh, look, something happened here. <clears throat> something exploded here. Interesting. Something. What is this? Oh, this is the arrow. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Let's just undo. Huh. I don't know. It seemed like some extra operation was applied on there. <laughs> Great. Okay, anyway. Um. Let's do a quick save. Quick, a quick undo. Just uh, oh, I see what's happening. Yeah, something in the higher subdivision got distorted. Let's undo again until this is gone. Okay. Looks like the higher subdivision got broken somehow. So this is a pretty simple model. What I'm going to do is uh, just delete my subdivision levels and just duplicate them again. Oh uh, yeah, well, I guess I guess the software still is a little buggy. You know, it's nothing new. I mean, this this has been around for ten years at least. Um, this feature, so you know, but we're working with you know ten million polygons, sometimes fifty million polygon models. And uh, you know, crashes just happen, and you kind of need to adjust your workflow a little bit to anticipate those happening. Yep, this is the last step, you know, and it's really more of the same. Um, just deforming the last kind of, you know, 10%. The last 10% of your work takes 90% of your time, something like that. Um, that's that old rule. Oh, what's going on here? So, uh, you know, yeah, you kind of just got to do this. You just got to kind of pose these fingers in the same way. If you have a lot of poses you want to do, um, it often makes sense to, uh, like, save off like a fist or, you know, just open hand, um, maybe a hand clutching a weapon, a few common, you know, handy poses that 
handy poses. Oh my god. Uh, that are just going to save you time not having to redo those poses later. So, But in this case, this is the only archer in my set. And this is from the Savage Remains set that is going to be on Kickstarter very soon. Uh, in fact, um, this model is kind of in promotion of that. Um, this model is going to be free. Oh, isn't that an awful pose? This model is going to be free. I'm going to share it on Reddit and Facebook, and uh, and, on the, and I'll provide a link in this video. Um, I invite you to check it out and 3D print it for yourself. And if you like this skeleton, this sort of thing, uh, printing this model, if you had a good experience, then, um, well, there's more where that came from. And in, in the form of the Savage Remains, and I'm making a whole... Uh, army of these um, armed skeletons kind of in mixed armor and so you can really deck yourself out um, in all kinds of whoa what's this see this is what I was saying <laughs> sometimes you deform stuff without noticing uh, yeah that's uh, I'll sh well since this happened I'll show you because yeah, that, that's part of the process too I'm going to duplicate this. Um, I like this hand. Let's just delete the nasty one. So this one's good. I'm going to come back here into, this is the original file that I cloned from. Let's undo until our fingers aren't looking terrible. Ah, see I had mirroring on. Usually really handy, but once you're posed, not so much. There you go. So, um, and, and, oh, I didn't say what I was hitting there, but I have a hotkey that deletes your hidden, um, hidden meshes. Delete hidden right here. So, yeah, you just hide whatever you don't want. Alt D, and if you don't have any subdivision levels, then, um, yeah, there it goes. Bye bye. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish cleaning up this pose. Like I said, uh, check out the links in the description if you want to collect this model, print it for yourself. It's completely free. And then if you would, uh, if you if you like that, um, or maybe you just are already into skeletons or whatever, there's the a link to the Kickstarter as well. That's the Savage Remains. And thank you so much for watching yet another tutorial. Um, I'll try and be back soon again with another one. Let me know if there's something that's bugging you about the ZBrush to 3D printing process and I will try and demystify that if I can. Okie dokie. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.